Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to The Moon. I'm your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray. And today I'm joined by my esteemed co-hosts, Ricardo Martinez and Jerry. And today we are also going to be interviewing the fantastic Paul Puey. And Paul, before I ask how you're doing, uh, I will introduce you to our audience. So uh, Paul is the CEO and co-founder of Edge Wallet, uh, a Bitcoiner and hobby rock climber uh, from the Philippines and raised in the US. Uh, I think all of that is correct, but you can always tell me if I'm wrong. How are you doing? How are you doing today? Uh, doing well. You knocked it out of the park. Yeah, most people don't know that I was originally born in the Philippines, definitely raised in the U.S. most of my life. Can barely speak a lick of Tagalog, which is the main language out of the Philippines, but uh, definitely part of my heritage and enjoyed my life here almost primarily in California the whole time. Nice. Cali, Cali guy. Okay, that's cool. But it's, uh, yeah, definitely. It's good to be proud of the heritage. So yeah, it's, uh, that's why I found uh, about you online anyway. And I've watched some interviews and all sorts uh, and uh, checked out Twitter and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I guess, uh, well, yeah, I suppose I, I have a number of questions. I think, I think uh, myself from Carlo and, and Jerry do, but um, one of them, um, I kind of is what you, based on what you just said, actually. So obviously, as you said, you're raised in California um and growing up in the u.s uh, and you were involved in like the tech industry i i suppose from from fairly early on and uh, because you worked at nvidia for early example age. yeah worked in uh, video, I was coding at like fifth sixth grade writing some simple programs and whatnot in in the i guess you can call it open source era era back in the days we call it shareware shareware um, but yeah definitely been in technology most of my life i did take a break for a little bit but uh i just happened to be in california that's where my parents landed when uh they, they migrated over and happened to be in the epicenter of technology and, you know, the Bay Area, Silicon Valley. Um, maybe that had an influence in it, but I think it's just kind of almost part of my soul and psyche to be a part of technology. It's like some happy coincidences that just kind of go with who you yeah. are, I suppose. Um, so I suppose like that is obviously definitely uh, kind of something in, in line a little bit with Bitcoin, because obviously it's technology, right? But like, what's your... I guess, what's your Bitcoin story um, with all of that? Like, how did you find it and kind of what was interesting about it to you, I suppose? Because everyone seems to have something different that kind of hooks them to it um, and makes them decide to, to move into this as like a sort of uh, hobby. Yeah, I think, uh, I think if you look at Bitcoin and some of the main things that interest people about Bitcoin, um, ironically, I think almost all aspects of it were, were compelling to me. So from the viewpoint of the technology, a lot of people get into just pure technology. Like they don't care about like financial freedom. They don't care about, you know, monetary policy and whatnot. They're just like, wow, this technology is really fascinating. You know, it's solving a hard computer science problem. Um, and given that I, like I mentioned, grew up in the Bay Area, you know, worked in Silicon Valley, used to work for NVIDIA. Uh, the technology was fascinating to me, right? It's, you know, I was, mm. I've been for the most of my life uh, a software engineer. And I love that, you know, hard problem, uh, a hard problem was being solved with Bitcoin. You know, I worked at NVIDIA and I felt like, there's a, few, there's a few different disciplines of computer science uh, that draw a lot of the sh sharp, smart people in solving hard problems. And I felt like computer graphics is one of those. Um, I felt like I was surrounded by having worked in that industry, a lot of the really sharp people that know very complex math that actually put stuff on your screen. And growing up to me, that was magic, right? It, it, as they say, any, any sufficiently complex technology can be seen to someone else as just magic. And that's what it was to me. And so to kind of unravel that magic and see what's inside of the top hat of a magician was fascinating to me. And I love being surrounded by those people. And in the same sense, Bitcoin, um, I feel in similar sense, being surrounded by a lot of the sharp, smart people that are solving hard problems of distributed computing and cryptography. So that part definitely appealed to me um, from the viewpoint of kind of a different mechanism by which we can uh, send value. That part appealed to me actually from the period in time when I stopped working in technology. So from about 2005 or so, give me one second, I've got a call coming in here on Signal, which oh, great privacy app, which I'm also a big fan of. But um, uh, from about 2004 to 2000, I pretty right into the, when I got into crypto in 2013, that entire time I'd worked actually in small business. Um, didn't really do much in technology other than, you know, the kind of things that every small business needs. You know, you need accounting, you need some software, IT and whatnot. But for the most part, didn't really touch technology. But I, having worked in small business, I realized the value of having access to proper payment mechanisms, particularly more, more irreversible. I witnessed having worked at a bar or restaurant, counterfeit money coming across the table. 
having to deal with counting wet and dirty bills um, after a nightclub event, having to haul tens of thousands of dollars from a small business to a bank in a backpack, hoping I don't get jumped. And then as well, of course, the thing that everyone talks about dealing with chargebacks of credit cards. If you think credit card fees are high at three to 5%, if you actually tack on the chargebacks that you're very likely to get, especially in an environment like a nightclub and restaurant where it's dark, you don't really know if the ID matches and whatnot, and most don't even check an ID. If you add that, then you're looking at more like six, 7% all in all. Like you don't know when you're going to get a chargeback. If you take it on a year basis, you're actually adding another percent or two. So that piece really appealed to me. Like the fact that we have a different payment system, one that doesn't have the same issues that we have with traditional kind of credit card based payments, debt based payments. Um, that appealed to me as well, like basically the, the, the payment system. And then a third part that appealed to me was a little bit more indirect. And this is where I, this is from when I had worked in kind of the health and wellness space. I had actually worked in a gym. I was uh, uh, an instructor for, for climbing adults and kids and whatnot. And you start surrounding yourself with that kind of, with those type of people. You start learning different ways to take care of yourself um, from a health point of view, what you should eat, what you should do. And I was surrounded by great, you know, healthy, well-standing people. And I realized that a lot of what our world tells us as truth, as far as everything from medicine to nutrition and whatnot, a lot of it is, I'm not going to call it like a blatant lie, but so, so divergent from what I found actually works. And that a lot of our system is really rooted in, well, what financially works for the big companies? What do the incumbents want to, what, what kind of narrative do the incumbents want to drive their bottom line? Um, I'd read an interesting book. I don't know if any of you have read uh, Born to Run, right? That was one of the books that really initiated some of my thoughts. Um, and Born to Run was uh, a book that tell, told a true story of a tribe. And I think it was Mexico or South America that was, you know, from almost birth till 60, 70 year old, they just ran all the time. They would run hundreds of miles sometimes in a day um, just because I was just part of their, their psyche. Um, and they ran most of the time nearly barefoot. So you know, there's the whole, um, you, you've heard of sure of the, the trend of barefoot running and what yeah, it yeah. does for you. It's very dif difficult for most people because we're just not accustomed to it. And in that story, they had told how shoe companies obviously don't want that trend actually moving forward. They don't want people adopting that trend because they can't sell shoes. You know, these, these tribal Indians were basically running in leather sheets, sheets of leather, and that's it. There was almost nothing there on your foot. So how is Nike supposed to sell this huge air sole cushion shoe for $150 when people found that it actually is healthier for you and more performant for you to run nearly barefoot once you strengthen your feet to become mm -hmm. strong enough to do so? So that's only one nugget example, but it really opened my eyes and started having me ask the question, what's the, the, the motivation underneath a lot of these companies? What do they want to do? And if you think about it, government to me is no different than a company. It's just a really, 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 really big one. It's, it's the biggest company in any geographical, geographic jurisdiction. And so discovering Bitcoin in 2013, after having a lot of those opinions about large establishment really, really changing the narrative, also a line for me to say, oh my gosh, this is a way of taking a lot of power from the largest companies in the world, which are the governments. And when they don't have that financial power, they have a significantly lessened ability to drive the narrative. Now the narrative can really come out from the individual. So I like to say that Bitcoin flattens the, flattens the pyramid. There will always be a pyramid. Like people, don't think, people have this dream it'll be totally flat, fully decentralized, everyone peer to peer, never gonna happen. Humans and animals actually crave hierarchy. But that hierarchy at a certain point becomes dangerous and it becomes corrupting. So the goal is to kind of flatten that hierarchy, flatten the dis distribution of wealth, flatten the power, and start to surface some of the truths that some of the, the, the smaller players in our world have and lessen the narrative that come from the really you know, largest companies at the very top, which for the most part are governments. So yes, all aspects of of cryptocurrency, almost all aspects of crypt cryptocurrency, Bitcoin have really, really resonated with me um, in different angles. So there's your, oh gosh, five, 10 minute answer to your first, first, first one question. No, I appreciate it. That's a really good answer. And it shows like how, and it kind of, I guess it already answers a question I had in my mind a little bit in that, like I was going to say, well, how did you find yourself going professionally into this? But I feel like I kind of already know the answer in that, well, hey, this thing's resonated so 
strongly. It's not just hit one point. There's three big points that have like hit you um, pretty yeah. hard there. And sorry for saying you're a hobby rock climber because you you instructed. So it's just beyond the hobby. So I'll take that's that. I said at the beginning. <laughs> it's a hobby that's... now for sure. So I guess you were accurate in saying that Paul is a hobby rock climber right now. So I barely call myself a professional. I was never. I never got paid to climb. Um, but I got paid to work in a climbing gym and instruct a few people and, you know, take a few people out, out into the, the rocks. Um, it never was something that I would call myself elite, but I had a great time doing it. And, uh, I was definitely much better shape than I am now. <laughs> no, it's a pretty cool thing to, to be involved in, but yeah, so I, I think that kind of answers what I was going to ask.